Okay, we're back. Uh, this is the um, actual lecture video for the week. I just did uh, about an eight minute video talking about a couple of problems people had on the quiz last week. Please watch that video, especially if you had any problems on the quiz last week. I did make one statement error as I was watching the video. I realized when I was solving for X sub C, I was looking for 60 ohms, not 60 hertz. Obviously 60 hertz is the frequency we're looking for. Also, I don't know if you noticed, I got my teeth fixed. So uh, no more big broken tooth. And uh, my dentist was finally uh, able to let me in and see her uh, to get that fixed up. So I don't look quite as goofy as I used to. Uh, last week we looked at uh, parallel circuits uh, with capacitors in them. I want to run through a quick uh, series circuit with capacitors in it. And then I'd like to jump into uh, circuits with both capacitors and inductors in them because there are a couple of subtleties that happen there. So let's go ahead and do a quick circuit with uh, capacitors uh, in series. So let's say I've got an AC power source. I'm going to call it 60 hertz and I'm going to say for the sake of ease I'm going to say it's 100 volts uh, AC, 60 hertz. And I said we were going to do series so it's a series RC, that is to say, it's got uh, both a resistor and a capacitor in that. I'm gonna throw some values at these two things just for ease of use. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to say 60 ohm resistor. And this capacitor, I'm gonna make some number, and it's usually microfarads at 60 hertz um, that get us uh, values that we can use and seem appropriate for this size circuit, a value that's somewhere in the neighborhood, or at least you know, within uh, uh, an order of magnitude or two away from 60 ohms. So I'm gonna just uh, pull one out of my hat and I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna say 75 micro farads, right? It's not Henry's, it's farads because we're in capacitance. If it was Henry's, it'd be an inductor. And that's a funny looking inductor. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to sol solve X sub C. And it's sub C because we're in capacitive, right? And remember that X sub C is one over. Super crucial that you remember the one over. And you invert whatever number is underneath. And this is going to be two pi F C. So it's going to be one over two times pi times the frequency times the capacitance. Now the capacitance I've got to dump in there is, is microfarad, so it's a millionth of a farad. So this is 75 millionths of a farad. Remember for millionths, I've got six places behind the decimal. Those are my millionths, right? And so if I go 75 millionths, then I fill in the rest zeros. Now this gave so many grief last week because you only wanted to put three in there but it's actually four zeros because 75 micro is the same as 075 micro. So that's my 075. So this is the number I'm gonna dump into that formula. Let's do it really quick in our calculators. Remember how to do this. I'm gonna go two pi, where's my pi button? There it is, two pi 60 times point zero 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 seven five. enter. Now I get a really, really ugly number. I get 0 0.028274334, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, that number is nowhere like this number at all. Now, in the real world, you could have a value for capacitive reactants in some number of ohms that's really, really tiny or really, really huge. But for my exercises, if you see that, you might say to yourself, hmm, I've forgotten to do something. In fact, what I've forgotten to do or what I haven't done so far is invert this. So I take that number and I don't need to write it down. I don't need to do anything else with it. I simply hit the button on my calculator that's above the seven, X to the negative one. That button gives me the invert of my last answer. So if my calculator shows answer to the negative one, which is one over that answer that I've already solved with two pi FC. Hit the enter button and voila, I have a number that is much more usable. It seems like the correct number for me. I need two hands. I've got 35.367765. So it's 35.367765. Now I'm going to talk about rounding again. One three. One three. So that's the number the calculator gives me. And it's obviously way too big a number. My, my tolerance on this and this is nowhere near this accurate, so I don't need a number that accurate. In fact, 
depending on what I actually have here, this may not be a very accurate number anyway. So I'm going to round it two places from the, from the decimal, down from the decimal, which makes sense to me. So I'm going to lop off all of this stuff here, right? And I'm just going to leave 35.36. But if I rounded this to 35.36, that's incorrect. I want to round this because 7 is bigger than 5. 5 or above, I round up, right? 0, zero 1, 2, 3, 4, I round down to 0. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I round up to the next number up. So 35.36, I'm going to round to 35.37 ohms. And that is going to be my X of C for the rest of this problem. Let's go ahead and write that up there. It's 35.37. 3, 7 ohms. Now, have I rounded? Have I inserted rounding error? Yes. Have I inserted less rounding error than if I'd left this at 35.36? Yes, I've inserted less rounding error by changing that digit up to 35.37. Last week, the number that was rounded 59.999, and many of you round, left it at 59.99, that was wrong. 60 would have been more correct to round that to. Not a huge deal, but I wanted to mention that. So I'm going to erase this business here. We've got our x of c. We've solved for x of c. We know what our ohms are. Now, remember, this is a series circuit. So in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. If the current is the same everywhere, this is a revision from what we learned in, in inductive circuits. If the current is the same everywhere, I don't have a Pythagorean relationship with the current. The current is in phase with itself everywhere. The current going through this resistor is in phase with the current going through this capacitor. It's the voltages that divide in a series circuit. Therefore, it's the voltages that have the Pythagorean relationship. So when I draw my triangle, the first thing I need to do with my triangle in a series circuit is I need to solve for Z. And Z is going to be my hypotenuse. Now, the way I like to do it, I always put the resistive element down here at the bottom. So I've got 60 ohms for my R, and then up here I've got 35.37 ohms, and that's my X of C. With those two numbers, I can solve Z, and Z will also be in ohms, as it always is. And the way I do that, again, calculator cheating here, or not really cheating, but the method I use, is 35.37 squared plus 60 squared, and then I hit enter. And that gives me a number, it's just an intermediary number, I'm not using it yet. It's essentially that number underneath the square root, and I hope I didn't just change it, I did, uh, by getting rid of my calculator. Remember, this formula we're doing here, z equals the square root of r squared plus x sub c squared. So that's this number that I've just solved for in my calculator. Let's see if I can get back to where I was. Um, and I'm going to have second square root second answer enter and that gives me 69.6493 69.6493855 again i don't want all of that i'm going to round to 6964 and i'm going to lock this stuff off but my next digit's a 9 so this guy goes up and i correctly round that to 69.65 Significant digits. This is a significant digit into its rounding up there. These become insignificant digits. Don't care about them. My Z that I'm going to use is 69.65 for the rest of this exercise. Now that I've erased it, I'll probably forget it. 69.65 ohms. I think I did that correctly. You guys will tell me if I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and use that value of 69.65 for the total impedance for this circuit. And remember, if I have the total voltage and the total impedance, I can solve for the total current. And that current is going to be our baseline, because the current will be the same everywhere. If I solve the total current, I solve the individual current in each of these components. And I'm going to solve current using Ohm's law. I equals P over, in this case, Z. Remember this formula? We substitute Z in there when we're talking about we have different flavors of impedance. We have resistance and reactance. In this case, capacitive reactance and resistance together make Z in that Pythagorean relationship. 100 divided by 69.65. Again, calculator cripple here, clear, uh, 100 divided by 69.65 equals, 
1.4357. And then the next digit is 5. Again, where do I want to round? Well, I'm going to round to two digits past. 1.435, I actually round up here. Now, that's a big round. So if you don't like rounding up there, let's go one extra digit, and we can say 1357. And I'll keep the 5, but I'll actually round it up to 1436, because 7 is the next digit. So I've rounded three digits there, rather than rounding a 5, which would have been a, a, a pretty far round. And by doing so, I've given myself a 10 times more accurate number. Is it going to change things much? Probably not. I could have, I could have gone 1.34, and that would have been uh, 1.43, 1.44, excuse me, and that would have been fine. 1.436 amps. So I'm going to use that number just for fun. And I'm going to take that current, because again, series circuit, current's the same everywhere, and I'm going, to, I'm going to install it right up here. It is up here. I'm going to put it in my 1.436 amps. 1.436 amps, and both of those, and I'm going to use those to solve my voltages. So my E at the resistor is my voltage at the resistor. Here's my resistor. E's formula is I times R. In this case, I'm going to take my I, which I know, 436 amps, times given 60 ohms, and that's going to give me my voltage there. 1.436, whoops, 1.436 times 60, and that equals 86.16. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my E at the capacitor, and that's going to be I times what? X sub C. And so that's going to be 1.436. Now remember, I'm using the X sub C. I'm not using Z because I'm solving it for the, the business right here at this capacitor. And the current at that capacitor is 1.436. But the reactance, the ohms at that capacitor is the X of C. It's not the Z, it's not the R. So I need to use that component's actual ohms readings in this formula. So times, what did I decide? 35.37 ohms. And so I go clear, 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 1.436. Make sure I've kept that all the way. Times 35.37. And that equals 50.79. And it's actually the number I've got is 79132. One is smaller than five, so I can just round that off and leave the 79 as it is. I guess I could round it to 50.8, but that's a big round. That's a, that's a 10 times more round than I just did. So 50.79 volts. Remember, units for volts is V. Should have put that unit up here too. Now I've got. 100 volt circuit dropping 86 volts at the uh, resistor and then another 50 volts at the capacitor. Well, how can that happen? Well, it happens because they're out of phase with each other. There's a phase difference. So some of my voltage at this point is dropping uh, 86, but it's out of phase with the 50.79 that's dropping over here. And any given point in time, if I add those two sine waves, I could theoretically graph the two voltage sine waves that are out of phase with each other and take any split second in time and I can add this number and this number to create a separate sine wave and that separate sine wave would end up being a V a RMS sine wave of 100 volts. It's goofy, it's the Pythagorean relationship, it's the degrees of difference between those two voltage sine waves. Remember, there is a difference between the two voltages as far as lead and lag because um, they, it is a voltage divider system. And the voltage in the capacitor is going to uh, actually lead compared to the voltage in the resistor. Um, when we solve the whole thing, we obviously solve the, the difference between the, the current and the, resi uh, the current and the voltage in our final sine wave. But that's what's going on there. That's how I can have two numbers like that add up. And I, of course, want to do my Pythagorean check on these to make sure that my E total equals more or less 100 volts. And so I'm going to check that by taking my resistive voltage, which is 86.16 volts, and my capacitive voltage, my voltage at the capacitor, 
50.79. I'm going to take this guy's square plus this guy's square. You guys all recognize this formula. I'm going to say that E at the R squared plus E at the C squared should equal, uh, in this case, E total or E source, however you want to call that. Let's check it really quick and make sure I haven't made any mistakes here on the board. Uh, 50.79, because you all know that's possible, squared plus 8.6, come on, 8.6.16 squared equals some big ugly number, second square root, second answer, boom, I got 100.0158. 100.0158. So if I was going to round that correctly to two digits, it would be 100.02, which is completely close enough. That 02 represents all of the rounding errors I've made so far. And when I say error, it's not that I rounded incorrectly. It's that I inserted an error into my numbers by rounding it all. Um, not that big a deal. This is totally close enough to what we do as electricians. If I've got 100 volts on a source, I'm supposed to have 100 volts, and I put my meter on there and get 100.02, I'm going to be thrilled. I've got an exact, I've got a perfect source at that point. It's not a big enough, big enough deal to uh, have a problem with that. Okay, so I've checked my Pythagorean. I've solved my voltages. Let's go ahead and put our voltages up here before I do the bigger race. So I've got 86. 16 volts, and over here I've got 50.79 volts. And I'm going to erase a bunch of this stuff because I got more work to do, don't I? 36 amps, I've got those up there. I'm going to erase that triangle also because we're going to obviously do another triangle. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is I need to solve my powers. Now I have three flavors of power, right? I'm going to have power uh, true, and this is actual heat dissipated. This is actual energy that leaves the circuit, and that all happens at the resistor. When I run a current through a resistance, a resistor, it creates heat. That's, that's all it does in physics, is it turns that electrical energy into heat energy, and that we call true power. So that's power that's leaving the system. And that equals I times E, and that's the current at the resistor times the voltage at the resistor. So my current at the resistor is 1.436 amps, and my uh, voltage is 86.16 volts. So let's dump that through my calculator. Clear. Let's see how much time I've got left here. I have got eight minutes left on this video. I'm probably gonna have to stop this and start another one. So uh, clear, 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 1.436 times 86.16. 1, 6 equals 123.726. I'm going to call it 73. 123.73 watts. Remember, true power's uh, unit is watts. I'm going to say P reactive. Now, I only have one reactive element in this circuit, it's the capacitor. So I'm going to use that. My I. Uh, is my current everywhere, series circuit, and my E is my E at the capacitor. So and that's going to equal 1.436 times, what did I say my voltage was? 50.79. Clear, clear, clear. 1.436 times 50.79. That equals 72.93. And I can round it to 72.93. I can drop off the next digit because it's smaller than 5. But well, again, what's my, what's my unit here? Well, it's reactive power, so it's VARs. VAR or VARs, doesn't matter. <clears throat> to solve power apparent, I need a triangle. Here's my triangle. Not going to draw a big fancy one for you or anything. It's a right triangle, even though it doesn't look like it by the way I drew it. I'm going to have 123.73 watts down here in the resistive end, and I'm going to have 72.93 bars here at the reactive end. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit the clears, so I do this with my rounding. 
72, because if I just leave the number in my calculator and use it, I actually don't get that rounding error. I keep the whole number in my calculator, but just so you guys can play along at home. 72.93 squared, there's my square button, plus 123.73. Remember, I have to square them both. Some of you have only been squaring one of the numbers sometimes. Uh, and that's my square button. Equals, that gives me the whole number under the radical. Remember, the square root sign is the radical. And then I go second square root, second answer to just dump that number back in and get its square root, and I get 143.624. That number makes sense. Let's see if I can get a better marker that you can actually read on this video here. <clears throat> 143.624 VA. Remember, my unit for power of parent is VA. Now, here's a place some of you guys screwed up last week. So power of parent, I've solved over there. It's 143.624, 143.624 VA. When I'm solving for power factor, power factor equals power true divided by power of parent, not power reactive. A bunch of you use power reactive there or forgot to solve for power of parent and then used power reactive. You have to do that. The other way to remember it is watts over VA because that's my true power and this is my VA. And in this case, my watts are going to be 123.73 and my VA is 143.624. See how we are on time? <clears throat> I got four and a half minutes clear. We can do this. One, two, three point seven. 3 divided by, make sure that's the right number, yep, 72, no, I don't divide by 72, I divide by 143.624, and that equals 0 .8614, 0 .86148, and then other numbers, but I'm going to keep 8614, next number is 8, i got to round that up to 8615, or 86.15%. That's my power factor. Not a bad circuit. 86% power factor is pretty good. If I go um, negative one cosine of 0.8615, let's see what I get. Clear. Let's see. Second cosine gives me negative cosine negative one. I always do this wrong. It's cosine negative. It's the invert cosine. And then I'm just going to put second answer in because I still have that number in my calculator all out to all those decimals. And it equals. 30.516 or 30.52 degrees. That is the unit, is 30.52 degrees. Now, I'm gonna write that up here. Angle theta equals 30.52 degrees. Power factor equals 0.8615. Because I'm gonna erase all this other stuff and we're gonna talk some more about the sine wave and what I want to see and that I'm not seeing from you guys on the sine wave. But before we do that, I'm going to stop this video and start a new one. So make sure to watch the next video because it's important.